Randall Wells died on April 28, 2012, in what initially appeared to be a car accident. When Austin, Texas police attended the accident, they discovered a knife in Randall's chest. His death was quickly connected to an altercation that occurred earlier in the day. Randall's murderer was identified as Hector Hugo Ramirez Lopez. Police looked for Hector, but it soon became apparent that he had fled to Mexico. Tune in to find out how a true crime television show led to Hector turning himself in. Hey everybody, welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. I'm Christy Brower here with my sister, co-host and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey Katie. Hello. How's it going? Well, it's going, you yeah. know, and I, I've hesitated to talk about this, but I'm going to do it one time because I know some of you guys are wondering because I've talked okay. about it quite a bit. I was wondering. I wasn't going to ask. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like we just got to address the elephant in the room and get it over with. But uh, sure. you guys know I've talked a lot about my little dog, Skippy, that was 16, my little chihuahua. Uh, and he passed on Friday. Yeah. He had a major seizure. He'd been struggling with seizures for four years. And oh, they uh, really yeah. flared back up yep, last Tuesday. And it was just a battle. We knew we weren't going to win at some point. And, right. um, you know, it, it, we didn't. He was done. He was exhausted. And I just don't think his little body could take any more. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're devastated. And we're dealing because that's yeah. what you do. You know, and you guys... Well. It I, is part of my job. I'm an animal communicator and I help other people escort their animals across the bridge, you know, so many times, but, um, you know, it's still really hard to do it yourself. So anyway, sure is. we're okay, but, uh, yeah, we're sad. We're really sad. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Damn it. Yeah. Boo. Anyway. Yeah. So there you go. We're going to stop talking about it, but yes, we are. I know no, you guys are wondering, about. several of you have reached out. So there you go. We're brave. We go. We're okay. okay. Here we go. Yep. Getting and, through. But on to right. much more happy news. Happy birthday. Yes, it is my birthday. Yes. You guys, I'm 46. This is the downhill run to 50. Yeah. I'm closer <laughs> to 50 than I am to 40 at this point. I don't you even know. know. You know, my You're 40s considered have been vintage. great. What? You're considered vintage over I 40. I am vintage. And antique over 50 so apparently you know i've talked about this a little bit but i keep discovering that i am vintage now that everything that i mm -hmm. loved as a kid and growing up is now on vintage t-shirts yeah. so i have like all my favorite bands from being a kid i was wearing yesterday a my little pony t-shirt that i found recently like it's all back because it's vintage Except vintage is cool. I lived it. So <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, vintage is cool, I guess. Yep. Um, I will take it. Frankly, my 40s have been awesome. Um, yeah. The older I get, the less I give a fuck about anything, to be perfectly honest. Just <laughs> whatever. <laughs> F this, F that. I don't care. So it's actually really nice. Mm -hmm. And I am excited because we are going to dinner this evening for my birthday. Yes, we are. And for Italian, which is my favorite. And honestly, it's going to be great. Life yeah. is pretty darn good. Well, I made, finished making your gifts last night. I cannot wait to give them to you. You guys won't be able to wait. Well, <laughs> on Wednesday night case updates, I promise I will come with receipts. I'll show you some pictures. But uh, I guess yeah. I'm so excited. I am beyond proud of myself. So <laughs> I have been waiting like, I know it's my birthday. And now every time you make cool stuff for everyone. And I'm like, it's my turn. <laughs> when do I get my birthday box? <laughs> right? When do I get my birthday? Right? I am excited. Well, I get it this evening. So looking forward to that. Just, you know, life yeah. is pretty darn good. I got to say. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. Very good. And this is our Monday case. It is. And this is a case, actually, we didn't, we weren't aware of at all, except no. that something really extraordinary happened with this case, and it happened because of a true crime television show. And this is the thing 
that uh, we want to talk about because, you know, true crime gets a lot of flack, particularly from sometimes law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why we do what we do. And this is the perfect illustration of that. Yeah. So let's get into it. This is the murder of Randall Wells. Yes. So this happened. Sorry, got to find my right notes here. In 2012. In yeah, Austin. this happened in 2012. Um, so Randall Wells was found in a wrecked car with a knife in his chest. Yeah. Which is really, you know, upsetting and not cool and yeah. sad for Horrible. his yeah. family. So in October of this year, um, the, uh, this cold case aired on In Pursuit with John Walsh. You all yeah. probably are aware of that TV show. Yeah. And a rather extraordinary thing happened. After that episode aired, the suspect in this case, his name is Hector Hugo Ramirez Lopez, he had the police believe he had run to Mexico after after um, Randall's murder. Murder, and we're going to get into more in just a minute about sort of what happened there. Mm -hmm. However, what's interesting is that he ran to Mexico. The police were never able to get a hold of him. Mm -hmm. And after this law and crime episode, or sorry, sorry, not law and crime, in pursuit with John Walsh. Law and crime is one of the people um, reporting on it. Um, he turned himself in. Yeah. Now, we don't know for sure that he saw that episode, although I think it's probably pretty obvious that he did because it brought up the, you know, it, it brought this whole thing back to light. He may have thought, hey, I'm, you know, I'm golden. This is, nobody's going to ever even know about this. Yeah. Right? Um, and this is why true crime reporting matters. Yep. Is because, you know, in pursuit with John Walsh, just like True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters mm -hmm. and lots of other true crime channels, we bring up cold cases to remind people that, yeah. hey, this murder has never been solved. This person has never been found. Don't forget because it's so easy to forget and it's easy for law enforcement. You know, this guy disappeared to Mexico. There was really nothing they could do. They yeah. couldn't prove that he'd done it. He was a suspect. But nope. they didn't have any proof and they couldn't get a hold of him, you know. I don't think they had enough to get a warrant to bring him back to the U.S. No. But guess what? It tugged on the murderer's uh, heartstrings a little. Or maybe he was just afraid he would be caught because his name's out there, his picture's out there again, you know. And they're saying this is who the police is looking for. You That's, know. That's, yeah. My take on that is that it was uh, people who know him mm -hmm. who saw that and went, what the hell is this? Yeah. And basically told him either you're going to turn yourself in or we're going to turn you in. I feel yeah. like this may very well have been family members, you know, or people that were close to him. He's identified like by he was name put up to photo. This. Yeah. yeah, put up to like, uh, turning himself in. Yep. Yeah. If you did this, you need to go make it right. Yep. So let me tell yeah. you a little bit more about what happened on that day. Yeah. So a little bit earlier in that in the day, this was on April 28th of 2012. This is in Austin, Texas, and Austin police were called to an apartment complex. There was a loud. Um, hang on. Well, OK, so there was a loud there was a loud noise. Mm -hmm. um, and he saw a vehicle that had crashed in the parking lot of this complex. Mm -hmm. um, when he goes over there to check, it's Randall Wells in the car, and he's mm -hmm. uh, he's suffered a knife wound to the chest and lost consciousness. Uh, he was taken to the hospital where he later passed away. Yeah. Um. So he died of the stab wound, you know, not the accident. Yeah. Uh, so the death, his death, was ruled a homicide. Um, and Ramirez Lopez was identified as a suspect. Now, the reason that he was identified as the suspect 
is that there had been earlier in the day at this same apartment complex, there had been an altercation where Randall and Lopez had kind of, there was a, like, they were arguing, like Randall was in his car, Lopez was out on the street, sort of, they were arguing with each other and there was a group of people standing there and Randall took off and left Mm -hmm. to get away from there. And at the time, Randall actually had a friend with him. Mm -hmm. There was a witness to that altercation. Well, when Randall came, came back later in the day, I imagine hoping, hoping that old Hector had taken off at that point, he was still there. So they had this other, um, this, this other issue, mm-hmm. you know, where they had another confrontation. And during that confrontation, uh, Hector stabbed him. Yeah. And he tried to drive away and wrecked his car. Yep. So apparently what initially started it is that Randall Wells may have whistled at a woman. um, And then someone threw something at his car because of that. Ah. And so then this group of men had this confrontation. And did they both live there? I am not sure. That is not confirmed. But the details of the incident are very sparse. They're very sparse. They are. Um, and I am not sure if he lived there or not. I have not seen uh, one way or the other on that. So was there was um, there were a couple of witnesses, of course. Yeah. So they did get some help. And one of the things that they had was a description of the car of the murderer and that car right down to a sticker that was on the car matched Hector Hugo Ramirez Lopez's car. Yeah. Uh, Uh, Apparently there had been something to do with a sexual assault case around this too. And Hector was taken into custody regarding that, mm -hmm. but he was released because they didn't have enough on him at the time. And so the police were kind of aware of him. And mm-hmm. two weeks later is when he killed Randall Wells. Mm-hmm. Um, so he ditched his car. He took off in his car when he figured out that the police could identify his car. He ditched it. And they believe that someone came and picked him up and mm-hmm. delivered him to the Mexico border. Because uh-huh. the thing is, Hector was a was a Mexican citizen. Mm-hmm. So he could go right into Mexico and be safe and yeah. nothing, you know, basically nothing would happen to him. So. Yeah. We don't know exactly why he came back. However, um, certainly in pursuit had something to do with it, I'm sure. Absolutely. His name is out there. He's being accused of this murder. There are people around him. I agree with you that this has got something to do with family and friends going, hold the phone. Mm -hmm. Did you do this? You know, and this is this is 10 years later, almost 10 years later. Mm -hmm. So he may be a different person. You know, he may have turned his life around. People might be kind of shocked by this or not. But I would imagine you're right that if family or friends saw this, they'd be like, you need to go make this right. Yeah. So he is being held on a $250,000 bond. Um, let's see here. Um, and he's charged with three different uh, felonies. They're not specified at this point, mm-hmm. but we'll kind of keep an eye on this. But very yeah. interesting that, um, you know, this would happen. But it is just a reminder and a validation of what we do. Yeah. You know, we talk about old cases all the time. Yeah. And we're just we're trying to bring attention to them. We're trying mm-hmm. to lift them up so that people don't forget. Yeah. You know, the family of Randall Wells has never forgotten that he was murdered. Oh, my goodness. You know, Randall and Wells obituary is about the sweetest thing you will ever read in your whole life. It is. It is very sweet. Yeah. Very much a beloved uh, young man. And, you know, yeah. life, life ended way too early. He had 11 siblings. He sure did. He was from a huge family. Mm-hmm. And his family has just grieved him immensely all these years. Yeah. And now finally, at least this, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. (coughs) So really interesting. Just thought we'd share that with you. We'll keep an eye on the case and see what happens with him if he just pleads out. 
kind of doubt he'll go to trial now at this point where he's turned himself in, but maybe he will. I don't know. No, nah, maybe he's going to defend it. Yeah. Well, once he gets an attorney on board, you know, who uh -huh. knows? Yeah, it's true. It's true. But we'll keep an eye on it. But it was just, it was just a nice validation to go. Yeah. True you know crime what? matters. Yeah. True crime does matter. True crime matters. Now we know true crime matters. We also know that accuracy matters and truth matters. And we know that because we a lot of times come to these cases well after the fact, mm -hmm. we have to rely on the media. And right. after, you know, doing this for the time we have, uh, we have a few policies in place for ourselves. One of which is that we uh, have to have at least three sources before we will report on something. Right. Uh, one is that we uh, will be very clear on the sources that we have and we'll share them with you guys so that if yeah, they are not always in accurate, the show notes. yeah, we, we want you to know that we've done our homework and that this is what we have learned. Yeah. And that can be hard sometimes because sometimes you'll find a case that literally every media uh, platform that reported on it regurgitated the same story. Yeah, it's just and a so, cookie cutter copy of the same mm -hmm. story. We've learned a lot about sleuthing out uh, more information from a lot of different sources to be able to help right. that get the right thing. And we get things wrong sometimes because we're just humans and because we right. are relying on what we have. Right. You know. And Often when we're accused of getting something wrong, it is a friend or family member that will come mm -hmm. into our chat and say this or that. And it's, you know, because if it's a rumor or something people know that hasn't been reported to police, there's not a lot we can do with that information, you know? Yeah. I mean, if yeah. we have it at the time, and we do try to talk to family members when we can, but we don't always have that option. No. Uh, we do look at social media, you know, to try to find what we can as well. But, um, you know, a lot of times what we get called out on are things that are rumors. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't know if that stuff's true or not. And we'll tell you if we're reporting something that yeah. this is a rumor. We don't know if it's 100 percent true or not. You know, we try to be as clear about that as we can. But that is a yeah. huge challenge in true crime. A, a, yeah, a huge one for sure. And because just because the press said it, it doesn't mean that's what's happening behind the scenes. Right. A lot of times the press is relying on what they're hearing from law enforcement. Exactly. And what ha is happening and between family. law enforcement? Yeah. Well, but there's a divide a lot of times between what family believes is happening and what law enforcement says is happening. Yes. And, you know, that sometimes that's where that happens. But, you know, as in all true crime, there will be some discrepancies, you know, because of that very fact, because we're all right. reliant on whatever, uh, you know, media and information we can get. I just feel like it's important to understand that for on our part and on you as the listener's part. Yeah. And also that, you know, if you know something we don't know, share it. Tell us. Yeah. We want to hear Let it. We know. love it. We'd love to know. Yeah. We, we don't like being called, you know, stupid and liars and things, but uh, <laughs> because we're not, we're not trying to be. No. We're trying to do the best work we can and put the best uh, information out there we can. But again, so there are definitely some challenges to that. Sometimes it's because info changes over time, you know, yeah. uh, not too long ago, a case that we had covered a while back was solved. Mm -hmm. And then uh, people were commenting, this is not even that, that case is solved. Well, yes, it was, but it wasn't when we were on it. Do you yeah. understand how the internet works? You know? Yeah, our cases are all chronological in time, you know, and yeah. <laughs> we do try to, that's why we do our update show every Wednesday yeah. is to give updates on cases. But, you know, that doesn't always line up with when the original episode aired, you know, versus when someone know. watches it and there's more information out into the stratosphere. So yep. anyway, it's an interesting job, this one, but <laughs> it, it, it definitely <laughs> is. It definitely is. Yeah, we We've do. And this is exactly why mm -hmm. is because, oh, you know, giving that boost to cases that have not had a boost in a while sometimes results in something being solved. And that's that's just yeah. what we want. And at this point, it's very likely that Randall Wells will receive justice and that the Wells family will yeah. receive closure. And yes. wow, you know, so good on John Walsh. Yeah, absolutely. Good on yeah. John Walsh. Well, this is our Monday case. We will be back Tuesday and Wednesday with new cases. Mm -hmm. We'll be back on Wednesday night with case updates. Mm -hmm. we, we have a brand new Patreon out. And a brand new Patreon out. We did a uh, true crime uh, 
Oh, cold read battle, a cold mm -hmm. read battle from across the pond. Mm -hmm. So we did all uh, British cases. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be back on Thursday for the psychic hour at 7 p.m. Uh, Mountain. That's when the cold, uh, the uh, case updates on Wednesday is also 7 p.m. Mountain. And there's court in the Daybell Vallo case tomorrow. So mm -hmm. we will be live streaming whatever of that is going to be live. We don't know at this point but we will be live streaming whatever is there and we'll be talking about that more yep we'll be here so, for it not only that the maxwell case started uh yesterday so we'll be really tracking and reporting everything we can on the maxwell case as well yes definitely. lots of big happenings this week yeah. yeah i know it's so interesting i guess it's because now, finally, with COVID, lots of things that have, were like scheduled to go to trial a, a year ago are finally going to trial. So a whole bunch of stuff has gone to trial in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, that's what we know. Yep. It's our story and we're sticking to it. Yes, it is. And you guys know it. We are True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. Thanks for being here. Take care. <laughs>